Hey, Dan Meyer here, and I'm back for part two of the four hour work week, my favorite quotes. This is uh, things that I read in Timothy Ferris's four hour work week. And basically when I read that book several years back, it was really inspirational to me. But recently I was reminded um, of the book and I started rereading it and realizing that I am living the four hour work week. I've gotten to the point in life. I've been blessed to be able to have weeks where I work four hours and my business runs without me and things go well and it keeps growing. Now there are weeks I have to work 100 hours. There are days I work till I'm just like, you know, I don't wanna work anymore. There are days I wish I wasn't working so hard, but I do enjoy those work weeks where it's just basically me at the beach or me at a conference or me doing things with friends where I still have to check in and run a few things and maybe attend a meeting or so, send up a few emails, but I got a team in place that's running the business. I built a system that is based on people being able to do things that I don't have to do myself. And this is something that Timothy Ferris talks about a lot. So I recorded a video yesterday on the, the part one of this video, and there were five things that I hit on real quick. I talked about you can't wait for perfect timing, that you should have huge goals because the bigger your goals, the less competition you're gonna have. Um, you have to do things from a point of passion. Um, you have to ask yourself, what would you do if you couldn't fail? What is something that you lean into because you love it? And I talked about how to get out of Busyville. When you're stuck in Busyville, you know that because every answer to everyone's question is, I'm too busy. If that's you, you're never gonna get your business where you want it to go. So that's what was part one. I covered those five topics. I got five new ones for you today. So today we're gonna to talk about you are who your friends are. That's number one. Number two, we'll talk about how to be data-driven and action ready. Number three is use oh, only use meetings as last resorts. Meetings suck, and we'll talk about that. Um, we'll talk about how to optimize the global talent chain. You shouldn't be tied down to the people that are physically around you. You need to take advantage of this planet of seven billion people's ability to work with you, work for you, buy from you, be your audience, be your, be your network. I'll talk about that. And I'll finish up talking about don't jeopardize what you have for what you might get. A fatal mistake a lot of small businesses make. They get so busy acquiring or so worried they're not making enough money by who they have acquired, they forsake the ones they acquired and lose them as well. So those are the five points I'll talk about today. Just to kind of recap my story, um, I we used to work for Wells Fargo. I worked there for 15 years. I learned a lot about systems. I learned a lot about technology. I learned a lot about how big multinational co companies use um, the system of the business to grow regardless of what people come and go inside it. I learned how to use technology to really drive innovation and how to really embrace new things that are coming down the pipe. Those taught me how to basically prepare me for launching my own business. And I launched my own business 10 years ago. And I've been doing the entrepreneurship thing for 10 years and I love every minute of it. I could never imagine working for somebody else again. I changed my lifestyle. I exchanged the 40 hour work week for the 100 hour work week, which would be insane unless you're doing what you're passionate about. And this is a key of Timothy Ferris's book, The 4 Hour Work Week. You have to lean into your passion. So, five tips I'm going to share with you today. Number one um, is based on the quote We spend too much time with those who poison us with pessimism, sloth, and low expectations of themselves and the world. Yeah, this one speaks for itself. We are surrounded by so many negative people. My mentor, Bill Walsh, and you know, I'm part of a group of power team speakers, and it's like my family of peers, and we are people that are optimistic and passionate and see opportunity in everything, and we take quick action, and we set high expectations for everyone around us, especially ourselves, and we know we are part of a bigger world. We have the worldview that we need to succeed, and my mentor, Bill Walsh, taught me once, he, he said that, you know, basically the biggest thing you should think about in in your life is you surround yourself with people and the five people you spend the most time with are the ones that define who you are. So take an inventory. Who do you spend the most time with? If they're not people who are optimistic and full of, of imagination and have high expectations of what's going to happen and are going places, you're not going to go places. You're not going to set high expectations. You're going to you're going to fall short because you're not surrounding yourself with people you should be surrounded with. The next quote that I, I pulled from Timothy Ferris's book that I thought was awesome is information is useless if not applied to something important. 
Right. So all the data we have, all the metrics we have should tell us what to do. We need to take action on those. We have to apply them. If we just gather data and don't use it, or even worse, don't gather data at all, we're just guessing. We're using our gut. That is such the wrong way to go. On Facebook, for example, you should be looking at your Facebook insights on your Facebook business page on a regular basis to make sure that you are engaging with your target audience and not a bunch of people who will never buy your products or be part of your network. So um, you don't want to forget what you do either. You want to track things so that you're reminded. You want to show progress. You want to build metrics. I have a team of people that are great in metrics and understanding social media metrics, website metrics, looking at why people do things, why their behaviors is doing what they're doing. We can explain that based on the data. So information is power, right? Is knowledge is power. Taking information, taking knowledge and taking it and turning it into action is something Timothy Ferris's book really talks about. The third thing I'll talk about today is just stop doing meetings. Nine times out of ten, a meeting is unnecessary, especially in a, a medium-sized or big company. I can't even remember how much time I wasted going to meetings at Wells Fargo. Um, we're kind of blessed in this current age where we don't have to attend as many meetings in person. So we can multitask so much easier when we're on a Zoom call, um, which is what a lot of us are doing. And a lot of us are actually trying to do less and less meetings because it ruins our flow. There is nothing worse than being in your zone being productive, cranking out something that's great, doing something that you love, and having to stop midstream to attend a meeting where nothing gets done, where no one does anything new, or just check in, support, whatever. You do need this occasionally, but bottom line, you have to really try to limit yourself to having so few meetings as possible. Quick chats, texts, occasional emails, those are okay, but basically you wanna find people that can run independently, that are simpatico with you, and once you find them, you just really don't spend too much time on meetings. That was something Timothy Ferris mentioned, and I believe in it. Another thing that Timothy Ferris mentioned is, quote, earn dollars, live on pesos, and compensate in rupees. You know, um, some people may take this the wrong way. Some people may not understand it, but what it means is that you need to be paid in dollars. Dollars are the, for as of right now at least, the best currency to get paid in. So you want to make sure clients are paying you in dollars and paying you U.S. market value. That's how you really grow a successful business. But you want to live on pesos. And, you know, unfortunately, a lot of places that live on pesos, like Mexico and the Philippines, um, they have a lower standard of living. They have a lower, you know, uh, average domestic um, consumption or gross no, uh, national product or however you want to measure it. Um, you can live further there. So you want to live um, frugally a little bit, right? You want to make good money that you're worth, and, but you don't want to spend the same amount of money. You want to be a little more frugal in your expenses. Now, you can still have fun. You can still enjoy life, but don't go out there and just live it up and buy a bunch of material stuff. And compensate in rupees. Now, there's a couple things behind this, this uh, part of it. One is that um, compensate in rupees, he's talking about outsourcing to India, which is a big thing when uh, the, the book was first written. The idea is that you outsource, especially IT stuff, and even some call center stuff to India. Um, re recently, we've seen more and more call center stuff going to the Philippines because the English is a little bit more tolerable. But bottom line is the idea is that you have to compensate. And this made me think of two other super influential books that I read um, that Timothy Ferris's book were, was super important in molding my entrepreneurship. But these books were super important in helping me understand the globalization of entrepreneurship. Now, for some people, globalization is a four-letter word, which is really stupid because let me make this point for you if it's not clear enough already. If American companies only sold, sold to America, um, we would only make like 20% of the profit that we make now. Like something like 80% of all the money to be made out there is overseas. So we can't keep being a rich, powerful, influential country that has all this great stuff we can do every day and all these freedoms and all these like cool things that we can spend money on if we're not selling our products overseas. So bottom line, I learned that in spades living in the Philippines. Um, I see what Thomas Friedman said, the world is flat, is so true. We live in a flat world where people all over the world can compete for the same stuff. Um, there are people that are super talented all over the planet and whatever you need. So if you need someone to be an expert in a certain application, a certain programming language, a certain type of business, you can find them and you don't have to rely on people that live in your zip code to do that. The other book I read was Robert Kennedy's The Services Shift. And this book is about the services shift where we've moved to a service-based economy. We 
spend money on what makes us happy and what we enjoy. We're all about delivering services. The U.S. is not and has not been for a while a manufacturing hub. We've actually lost some of our innovation hub to China. So um, what we have been the best at and still are probably the best at is services. So talk about that and how we keep doing it. And again, tying back to globalization. Um, Though these things are, are still political pot potatoes, you know, for some people, and I don't understand why, but I get it. Um, so read these books, right? They're worth your time. So if you read Timothy Ferris's Four Hour Work Week, you should, you know, combine that with The World Is Flat and The Services Shift, and that will get you to understand how I got to where I am now. The last thing I'll talk about as far as resources is a, my favorite movie. And people are going to go, what? That's a movie? Or I think I saw that. It wasn't about baseball. Um, it's based on uh, Moneyball by Michael Lewis, a movie with Brad Pitt came out like, you know, four or five years ago. Um, but the quote that Timothy Ferris said that made me think of Moneyball is, I dislike losing money 50 times more than I like making it. And that is so true. That is true for me. Um, I don't like getting new customers. I do it. It's, you know, I, I, when I'm enjoying it, it's because I like the person I'm working with. But I don't like having to go out and get a bunch of wild cards. I like to work with people I know and people I can trust. Um, it's easier. It's just easier to keep working with the same clients than it is to acquire and onboard and work with new clients. You have to keep bringing in new clients to grow. But you, if you don't take care of your existing clients, you will shrink. That was a lesson I learned in Moneyball as well. And Moneyball, it's all about, in, this, in a synopsis, if you haven't seen the movie or read the book, it's about how the Oakland A's, a small market baseball team, was able to be competitive on the same level as the New York Yankees and Boston Red Sox, big market teams, by looking at data and metrics and investing in um, a process, a system, that allowed them to get players that were good bargains. So they didn't have to spend a lot of money going out and buying a bunch of high priced people, they could grow and, and farm and take care of the people that they thought would help them be more successful. Um, it's the same idea. I hate losing money more than I hate, than I love making it. That's an important thing I learned with Timothy Ferris, an important thing that Moneyball reinforced, an important thing that I also can validate from my own businesses. So what does this mean for you? So Sonic VA, Sonic Virtual Assistants, right? We have a team of VAs that will help you do these things, right? So if you want to free yourself up from having to be at so many things, if you want to understand how to take advantage of the global marketplace as far as talent and opportunity, if you want to figure out what you need to do to surround yourself with experts without being able to have to physically bring them into your geographic location. This is how you do it. You build it through building a virtual team. You do it through building things around VAs. So Sonic VA, we do things where we help our clients be more consistent, have more clarity, and build more certainty because they have VAs that do the same thing for them. Your social media has to be consistent. Your marketing message has to be clear. Your customer service has to build a sense of certainty. And if you need that in your business or you want more of it, go ahead and get started with us. Just text the word data, the 26786, to get started. You'll get a form back if you text data, D-A-T-A, -A, to 26786. You'll get a form back, fill it out. Basically, just tell us some of the things that you want to outsource or delegate to help you get more free time, to help you focus more on what you do best. In fact, we talk about for you, you should focus on what you do best by hiring for all the rest. So anything that you need to have done in your business that can be done via computer, you can hire a VA to do, right? Facebook and YouTube videos, uh, marketing programs, social media management, uh, email campaigns, media bookings, contract, contact, ah, sorry, um, appointment setting, uh, Contracts sending out, you know, these are like apps like DocuSign, uh, doing things like understanding how to move things onto Google Drive, using project management tools like Trello, um, doing market research. I mean, there's a, a unlimited number of things that we can help you do. So you pick the things that keep you the busiest that you don't want to do because they're not your passion and you get them out of the way by giving them to a VA that frees you up to work on what you're best at and what you love to do most. So you can go to sonicva.com, it's S-O-N-I-C-V-A.com, or you can text the word data to 26786. This is video two in a three-part series. I dropped one yesterday with five uh, tips based on five quotes from Timothy Ferris. I'll drop five more tomorrow. So basically, I want to today thank you for your time, um, and I hope you enjoyed these quotes. I hope you read the book. If you haven't, go read Timothy Ferris's book and think about how you apply these, like I have. 
each of the quotes I showed you how I applied them in my life and how they have become super important to my success. So thank you for your time. Um, now I'll go out. I'll see you tomorrow. So go out there and have a great day.